What's up everyone, welcome back. Today I've got another Copilot video for you, this time Copilot in Excel. Now I did a video a couple of days ago about Copilot in PowerPoint, and I'll put a link to that up here, because in that video you're going to find lots of valuable information about the recent changes that Microsoft have made to their Copilot offering. And just the too long didn't read version of that is that the offering has now been extended to more people. So initially when Copilot was released, it was only available to organizations with 300 users or more at the hefty price tag of $30 a month per user. And if you're any good at maths, you can total that up. That's a lot of money. But now fortunately that has changed and we now have three offerings from Microsoft, Copilot, which is free, Copilot Pro and Copilot for Microsoft 365 applications. Now, I'm not going to get too much into the different offerings because what I want to focus on in this video is how we can use Copilot to help us out when we're working in Excel. So without further ado, let's just dive in. So for this example, I'm using a reasonably large data set. If we press control down arrow, you can see that we have 9,653 records. So it's not super huge, but it is a reasonable size. And I wanted to make sure that we used a reasonable size data set just to really test Copilot's legs and see what it can do. Now, there are three fundamental things that you need to know before you even start using Copilot. The first is that the file that you're working on must be saved to OneDrive. And that must be the OneDrive account that is tied to your Copilot license. The second thing is that you need to make sure that you have auto save toggled on. And then the third thing that you need in order to start working with Copilot is that your data must be in a table. Now, my data currently isn't in a table. If I click on the Copilot icon, which you'll find all the way over on the right hand side on the home ribbon, it will actually prompt you to put your data in a table. So you can see here, it's a little bit feisty, isn't it? I only work in an Excel table. All right, then we'll create an Excel table. Now you can see that we have some instructions down there. Select insert table to convert it. You can definitely do that. Or the quicker way is to use the keyboard shortcut, control T. Yes, my table has headers. Let's click on OK. And you can see that now I have a nice Excel table and I am ready to work with Copilot. Now, the first thing you'll see here when you open up your Copilot window is right at the top, you'll have some suggestions for prompts, things that you might want to do. So we can add formula columns, we can highlight data, we can sort and filter, or we can analyze our data. Then underneath, we have a few more suggestions. And then we have our prompt area at the bottom where we can type in questions or make a request about the data in our table. So let's do a few fun things here. Now, I don't particularly like having those banded rows on my table. So how how about we get Copilot to turn those off? Let's type in our prompt. Turn off banded rows. Let's see if it can do it. And there we go, it has. It is also worth noting that if I typed in remove banded rows, that would also have worked. So it's managed to turn off that formatting. And all it's really done there is if you take a look at the table design ribbon, it's just basically toggled off this banded rows checkbox. Now, what else could I get it to do here? Well, let's see if it can change some number formatting. Now, in this unit sold column, currently the formatting I have applied to these numbers has a comma separator. So let's see if it can make adjustments to that. So let's type in our prompt. And remember with these prompts, the more details you give it, then the better it's gonna be. So remove comma separator from the units sold column. Let's send it through and see what it does. The thing that I'm finding with Copilot is that for some slightly longer tasks, then it's actually really good. But a lot of the time it is just quicker to do it manually yourself. So, you know, <laughs> the choice is yours. <laughs> right. So there it is. It has worked. It's removed that comma separator. So we know that it can make modifications to cell formatting as well. So that's pretty good to know. Now notice each time that I send a request through afterwards, I get some other suggestions. So it's telling me that I could bold the top 10 values in the unit sold column. I could sort the total sales from smallest to largest. So these are quick ways of just entering in prompts based on suggestions and things you might want to do. Now let's say that I want to highlight in, let's say, I'm going to specify a color, highlight in yellow values that are greater than a thousand in the units sold column. 
So let's see if it can do that. Let's send it through. Almost there. And like magic, it's done it. So this is actually really good. Now, the thing that you need to remember here with this highlighting, this is actually just conditional formatting. So if we go to the home tab, go to conditional formatting and manage rules, you can see there, there is the conditional formatting. So that's pretty good because it means that if we were to add more records onto the bottom, then that conditional formatting is going to copy down and apply to any values that match that criteria going forward. So that's actually a really good thing. What else might we want to do here? So let's scroll across. Let's take a look. What about if I want to add a column that shows the operating profit as a percentage of the total sales? Let's see if it can do that. Add a column that shows the operating profit as a percentage of the total sales. Let's send it through. So this time what it's giving me is it's basically giving me the formula that's going to perform this calculation. So basically operating profit divided by total sales. Now notice underneath, if it does produce a formula, you can click the drop down and it will explain that formula. And this is actually a really good thing. If you are using Copilot on a worksheet that maybe you haven't created, a worksheet that contains maybe complex formulas and you don't really understand what that formula is doing, you can click on the cell that contains the formula and get Copilot to explain what the formula is doing. So from a learning perspective, that is really good. Now with this one here, I'm going to say, OK, insert column. Let's insert the column in. And there we go. Now I'm just going to check to make sure this is correct. So operating profit for the first row is 50 percent. And that would be right because the total sales is 600,000 and the operating profit is 300,000. So I'm going to trust that the rest of these are right. Now, I don't particularly like the two decimal places just there. Can I get Copilot to remove them? Let's try. Apply percentage format to the operating profit percentage column with zero decimal places. Let's see if that works. Let's send it through. And it has pretty darn good. Now, what else might we want to do with this column? Well, maybe I want to have the values in the operating profit percentage column shown as a data bar. Let's see if Copilot can add data bars. So I'm going to say add green, I'm going to be specific, data bars to the operating profit percentage column. Let's send that through. Now, I'm thinking it should be able to do this because data bars are, again, just conditional formatting. So if it can highlight things, it should theoretically be able to apply data bars. Which it can, and they're green. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> what about doing things like hiding or unhiding columns? Well, let's give that a go. Let's say hide column M. And there we go. Like magic, it's gone. We could do the reverse. We could say unhide column M. Alternatively, if you have quite a few columns hidden, you could say um, unhide all columns. And that will basically unhide everything. And there we go. Pretty good. So those are kind of some formatty things that we can do with our data set. But what about if we want to use Copilot to analyze our data further? For example, create pivot tables and pivot charts. Well, let's go down to our prompt area and let's say create a pivot chart that shows units sold by region. Let's see if it can do that. And there we go. Turns out it can. We have our little pivot table just here. If I scroll back up again, that shows units sold by region. So underneath, it basically gives you a little bit of an explanation and a bit of a further analysis. So it says I created a pivot chart that shows the total units sold by region as a clustered column chart. The West region has the highest units sold, and then it gives us the value, followed by the Northeast with 501279. So not only does it give you the pivot table, it also gives you a bit of context, a bit of further analysis. So what I could do here is I could say, yep, I want that one. Let's click on add to new sheet and it's going to insert that in. And now we have a little pivot table and we have our pivot charts. Now, if you're thinking that you can then click on this chart area and use Copilot, you'll be sadly disappointed because as soon as you click on the chart, the Copilot icon grays out. 
And even when we click on the pivot table, even though the Copilot button is active, notice that the prompt area is grayed out. So you can't actually click anything in here. So I'm going to say go back to table. And now we can carry on working with Copilot. So let's finish up by taking a look at a couple of other things that you can do, such as filtering and sorting your data. So let's say that I want to filter this data where the city column is equal to, and I'm going to say Houston. Let's see what it does. And there we go, check it out. It supplied filters to my table and you can see it's actually filtered this entire data set to only show the records related to the city of Houston. So that is also pretty cool. And I could take this a stage further and maybe sort this filtered list as well. So let's say sort the, I'm gonna type in filtered list just in case, sort the filtered list by the, total sales um, will do largest to smallest. Now check this out. It says, I'm sorry, I couldn't perform the action at this time. So maybe it's just the way that I've worded that prompt. Because if I look underneath, it says sort unit sold from smallest to largest. So let's use this format. Let's say sort total sales from largest to smallest, maybe that's a bit better. It might not have liked the filtered list part that I added. It's a temperamental beast. <laughs> oh, there we go, it's worked this time. So you can now see that we have the highest value at the top, 500,000, working all the way down to the smallest value. So again, that is pretty cool. Now, aside from all this, I could maybe just ask it questions. So I could say, um, give me a summary of this data set. Let's see what that comes up with. So what I'm expecting Copilot to do here is basically just take a look at my data as a whole and give me some insight into the key metrics. So let's see what we've got up here. So it's given me another pivot table, operating profit by invoice date. Okay, that's fine. I could set that in. It's given me a little bit of information underneath. Here is a summary of the data set. And then it's given me a little bit of a summary. Nothing in great detail. But if you take a look underneath where we have, can I see another insight? And then it says, add all insights to grid. So if I click on this, what you're going to find is it's going to create another spreadsheet and it's going to create a whole bunch of pivot tables and pivot charts. And this gives me much more of an insight. So if you just want to really create a whole bunch of pivot charts and pivot tables, analyzing your data, this is a super quick way to do it. So some of these don't look the greatest. You probably want to format them a little bit and make some changes, but this is actually really nice. So we have our pivot charts and then underneath we have our different pivot tables. And just to finish up, we can just ask very basic questions as well. So for example, if I just wanted to know which city sold the most units, I can type that in and Copilot's probably going to give me another pivot table. It seems to love pivot tables. <laughs> it's like when you ask it for a formula, it will give you a pivot table. I don't know what that's about, but it's probably going to give me a pivot table here as well. Yep, it's giving me a pivot table. <laughs> but it does give me my answer. So it's telling me that New York is the top city by units sold. And then I get a little summary underneath. So it's giving me my answer. And I guess it's quite nice having the pivot table there in case you do want to add it to a new sheet. So that is my little preview of some of the things that you can do with Copilot in Excel. Obviously, this is still in its very early stages. There are going to be so many improvements, so many changes over time, but getting to grips with this now is going to put you in good standing for using this little application going forward, particularly if your organization has signed up to Copilot, you're going to want to need to know how to use it in order to enhance your productivity. It's not a replacement for your own knowledge. It's there as an assistant to help you get things done quickly. That's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, like, share, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff, and I will see you next time.